Hello students and parents, hope you're doing well. Uh, we're going to continue our writing. Um, we're going to add the idea of verb phrases to our prepositional phrases. So we're adding something new to something we already know. Uh, verb phrases you're going to find out sounds complicated but is actually pretty easy. Uh, these are notes so you're going to need a spiral notebook and a clean sheet of paper to copy the notes on to. Uh, there is an example of the notes in your package as well. Um, and um, try and see if you can make some verb phrases on your own. We're going to be looking at improving our sentence writing, writing complete sentences that have a lot of information in them. And we've discovered prepositional phrases, which is a preposition and a noun that adds a lot of details to our sentences, gives us direction and position and uh, location of nouns. And a phrase is a collection of words, not just one single word. We're going to look at verb phrases, which is a collection of verbs connected in a phrase. I know this sounds complicated, but stay with me. You're going to say, oh, Mr. Buttinger, this makes so much sense. I use verb phrases all the time, and we do. It's just that we didn't know that we could actually think about them when we're writing. So um, verb phrases adds a little bit of time to what we're actually doing. So let me show you how to do that. And I'd like you to get a lined piece of paper, preferably in a spiral notebook, so you can keep these notes for later. And if you need some time to get that, go ahead and pause the video and get that before you start. So I'm going to write a really simple sentence that is one that you learned in first grade. I walked. Okay. Now we're going to add a preposition to that. So this is our, our verb part. Here's our subject and our verb. I walk to the store. Now this is a complete sentence with a capital and period. And if we were to map the sentence out, we could certainly find the prepositional phrase. Here's the preposition to and store the noun. And we could circle it to show that as a prepositional phrase. We could identify our subject predicate part, who did what. And this is what we did. This is our verb, and this is our other noun um, as a subject of the sentence of who did the walking. I did the walking. Now, for a verb phrase, and there are 23 helping verbs, to add another verb to this, we might have to change um, this verb a little bit, but we'll see if we can keep it the same. And we're going to add the element of time to it. This is what verb phrases do. They add a little element of time. I walked to the store. So this happened in the past. Someone asked you where you went, you could say, I walked to the store. Let's add a couple auxiliary verbs to this and see what happens. I could have walked. To the store. My period at the end. Now we're going to map the sentence out the same way we map this one out. Let's go ahead and do our preposition and nouns. Okay. This shows a location or a direction. Here's our subject over here, which is a noun also, and our verb over here, walked. So we mapped it the same way as we did our simple sentence up here. But we have these could have. These are called auxiliary verbs. And they are, these are both verbs. They're called auxiliary verbs. And see how it changed the time of things a little bit. I walked to the store. That was in the past. 
I could have walked to the store. So this is saying that you're probably thinking about walking the store, but the time of when you actually walk to the store is a little bit different than actually what happened in the sentence above it. So this is the use of auxiliary verbs or helping verbs, and there's actually 23 of them. So just like 40 prepositions, there are 23 um, auxiliary verbs. And it changes the time, the timing of when you actually did the action. So let's say this is example one. Let's look at the second example. Um, I'm gonna write a little bit lengthier sentence here. He kicked the ball. Period. I'm not going to talk about this part of the sentence. There are other parts of the sentence, but we're just focusing on verb phrases and prepositional phrases right now. This is called the object, but we aren't going to get into that. He kicked the ball. He has to kick something. So, and this is not a preposition, so this is obviously another part of a sentence. Now, here's our subject, okay, over here. And what did he do? He kicked. Here's our verb. Okay, and the ball again over here is the object, and we're going to add a preposition to this because it, does, it doesn't include one. So we want verb phrases with prepositions. He kicked the ball. Let's start another one down here. He, hmm, he will kick. And since I changed... I had to change my verb a little bit to make this sentence work. He will kick the ball to me. So let's ex say you're explaining a game to someone. He says, and you say, he will kick the ball to me and then I will throw it to you. So here, he actually kicked the ball and here you're explaining what's gonna happen in the future. So it hasn't happened yet. Let's both um, let's map our sentence. Here's still our subject, which is our noun. Here's our verb here, okay. Kick, okay. The ball to, here's a preposition, me, and a noun. He will kick the ball to me. And here's our auxiliary verb. These two are connected. You can't say, he kicked the ball. He kicked ball to me. He will kick the ball to me. So here's our auxiliary verb again. Right here. So the simple sentence didn't change at all from the words that we added here. We did have to add a little bit here that because the timing is different. Here you're going to explain what may happen in the future, and here is something that already happened in the past. So with our verbs comes when the action actually happened, and we're going to be using auxiliary verbs to define a little bit better when actually something actually occurred. Let's try one more. If you need more time, just go ahead and pause the video. Let's say, Mom, wash the dishes. So here's our subject again, our noun. Here's our verb, the dishes. Here's the object again, just like the ball. So we're missing a preposition. Let me go ahead and include my period here. This is a complete sentence, but we can add more details to this sentence. So let's, we're gonna change the timing. We're gonna add an auxiliary verb and a preposition to this. Mom is, I'm gonna to have to change my verb here again, washing the dishes let's say after dinner. Now 
Mom is washing the dishes after dinner. Complete sentence up here. A better description of what's happening down here. Both are complete sentences. Let's go ahead and map this sentence, this lower sentence. Here's mom, still the subject, the verb, uh, the noun. And we have wash or washing. We had to change the ending of this a little bit. The dishes is the object and we aren't gonna get into that. Here's our preposition that we added. Preposition, noun, after dinner. And here is our auxiliary word, our auxiliary verb. Mom is washing the dishes after dinner. Now this, mom washed the dishes. Here she already did it. Mom is washing the dishes after dinner. This could be um, almost an imperative, like someone saying that that's what she's going to do. It could be in the present. It could be, this is definitely the past. It could be something that's gonna happen in the future. Okay, so again, we change the time of when the action is going to occur by using an auxiliary verb. So this would be, this would be three examples of a simple sentence being transformed into a more complex and a sentence that gives us a lot more information. So at the bottom here, I'm gonna give you three simple sentences and I'd like you to add an auxiliary verb along with a prepositional phrase with them if they don't have one. So the instructions are, um, let's say expand uh, these simple sentences by adding um, a verb phrase and we do that with auxiliary verbs it could be verb or verbs and a prepositional phrase. And I'm going to go ahead and write those down here. And you go ahead, a simple sentence, you go ahead and make that sentence a little bit more complex. So put a second sentence underneath each one of these. Go ahead and um, try and add a verb phrase with a prepositional phrase. And there'll be a worksheet in the other video that will give you all of the 23 helping verbs to uh, go ahead and assist you in doing this. Thank you for taking these notes. Uh, it seems relatively complicated, but just like everything you learn, like riding a bike, you keep practicing and you'll get better.